Welcome back to the 25 Days of Mindful Movement series with me, personal trainer and yoga teacher, Isabel Wellman. Today we are focusing on balance and you will see that the order repeats itself every five days. For today's training session, I recommend that you have a yoga mat or a stable surface that you can balance on as well as maybe a block or a stool or a stack of books. Thank you so much for returning for day six. I'm really excited for this training session. And I hope that you are too. I hope that over the last five days, you've been able to get an understanding of where your body is at and the inventory list that maybe you've been taking in due to what your body has been giving back as feedback. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and start with a eight to 10 minute mobility warm up head to toe. If you do not know or haven't watched the first videos, please go back to video one or two to see a mobility circuit that you can use before this movement practice. To get started, let me go through each of the movements that we will be doing today and do a quick demo so you know what's coming up. Our first exercise today will be airplane hold. So that is when we will stand on one leg. We will balance ourselves so that we lean forward and our hands will either stay right in front of us in the chest or we will reach the arms back like an airplane. We will hold this for 30 seconds. The next pose is called half moon pose. So we will be going back onto one leg, reaching the arms out. And this is where it may be helpful to have a block or a stack of books. Or if you can, lower your hand all the way to the ground Begin to rotate the upper leg so that the hips are facing away from the body and you are slowly going to move yourself into this revolved position, half moon pose. We will then move into standing figure four. Of course, you can go to a wall for any of these movements or a couch or have a chair so that you can be balanced and focused on the form versus struggling and feeling like you're not accomplishing the movement. We wanna make sure we nail it with props and then slowly remove them so that we can get to that balanced position without the props. So for figured four, we're going to bend one leg so that the ankle's on top of the knee. Then we will bring the arms up above head and we're going to reach the hips back. And this is figure four pose. I'll now turn so you can see it from a side ankle. One leg will come in front, bend, ankle on top of knee, reach the hips back, as if you're sitting in a chair, tiptoe squats. So this one, we will sit in a squat position. Arms can go up or straight out in front of you, reach the hips back until the thighs are parallel with the ground, and then you're going to come up onto your tiptoes and lower. And this is tiptoe squats. We'll take that same squat position into a sumo squat. So we will widen the legs into a wide stance and the toes, if available, will face out away from you so that when you squat, your legs are completely externally rotated. And from here, we're going to lift one leg, set it down. Lift the other leg, set it down. Just like if we were a big sumo wrestler. Now we'll come into a standing crunch with an under the leg clap. This will look like drawing the knee up into the chest, clapping underneath, hands up. So drawing the foot, knee flexed into the chest and down. We will now use a lunging position. So this will be the curtsy lunge. A curtsy lunge is when you have the arms straight in front of you or hands in the chest. You reach the leg back behind you and out away from you, and then you stand up. With this curtsy lunge, we're gonna add an oblique crunch. Your obliques are the side muscles of the abdominals, and we will curtsy lunge, and then give ourselves a side crunch. Curtsy lunge, side crunch. Curtsy lunge, side crunch. And you can take a break in between 
going into the next curtsy lunge oblique crunch. Last but not least, we're going to do a high plank with a frontal arm fly. So this will look like coming down onto the mat, getting into a high plank position, and I'll turn just so you can see the fly better. You're going to balance into three of your limbs, lift up one arm, bring it out to the side, and back down. We're going to alternate this movement so that the arm comes up front, out to the side, down. How we're going to perform these exercises are in supersets. A superset is when you take two exercises and you perform them back to back, take a break, and then return to the first exercise, go right into the second exercise, take your break, repeat. We'll do this for three rounds for all of our sets today. We are going to be doing four supersets of three rounds. So we're going to make this a little extra spicy. Of course you can take a break, gather yourself if your legs are just burning off, but let's try it for the first round. We are going to be going into airplane hold and half moon pose. So when we go into airplane on one leg, we're going to rotate right into half moon on the same leg for one full minute straight of standing on the one leg. Make sense? So airplane for 30 seconds, half moon for 30 seconds. When you're ready, we're going to go up into airplane mode and hold it for 30 seconds. Then we will revolve into half moon. So pick your leg and get into airplane pose. Here you're going to press into the big toe and the pinky toe. Reach up through the arch of the foot. Keep the hands in the center of the body as you reach out through the stand or the lifted leg. Flex the toes back towards the body. Spread the collarbones wide as you roll the shoulders back. <laughs> and breathe. We're going to now use our block or our stack of books or lower the hand down as we rotate the hip open, the top hip open, and slowly look away from the body, lift the arm up for half moon. Try to keep the bottom arm straight underneath the shoulder. Press down into the fingers as you press back up, out of the top hand. You're doing great. And we can lower. Untwist. Bring both feet to the mat. Woo! We'll rest for 30 seconds. And then we'll go on the opposite side. So we have 15 seconds until we get going. How did that feel? Were you wobbling? If you were, grab a prop. Hold yourself in one spot, and it's okay if you stumble a little bit. I definitely was. We'll now go into airplane on the other side, and we'll start our 30 seconds. Squeeze the outer glute of the standing leg. Keep a micro bend in the standing leg, knee. Reach strongly out of the lifted heel as you lower that lifted hip as to not have a externally rotated hip like in half moon and we will now go into half moon so begin to rotate the body open reach the hand up see if you can lift that leg so you're in this 45 degree angle Rotate the rib cage up away from the body as you lengthen the lower or the bottom torso. And we can lower down. Woo! Good work. We'll rest for 30 seconds. We'll go back on the other side for round two. I love training balance because it's useful for everyday life. We'll get ready for airplane in three, two, one, and go down on the first leg you started on. 
sometimes if you let your hands come down first, you can set up the standing leg and the lifted leg in the hips. Then once you feel ready, inhale the hands up. Draw the shoulder blades down and back. Keep the integrity of the hold. Draw the stomach in towards the spine for three, two, one. Let the hands lower down. Let your bottom hand stabilize. Begin to externally rotate the hip open. And allow that top arm to come all the way up. The farther you have your arm out away from the shoulder, the easier it will be to stabilize. Again, rotate your upper rib cage up towards the ceiling. If you can, you can even begin to turn the neck to look up at that hand. I'm just a wobbling girl over here. We're almost there. Stay strong in the leg. And we'll go down in five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. We'll rest for 30 seconds. Shake that standing leg out. If you start to feel it becoming a little numb, like there's a restricted flow of blood going to your leg, do not fret. That's completely normal. And when we do have that happen, we're actually rejuvenating the blood in that section of the body, releasing toxins and pressing them into the urinary tract so we can expel them. Let's get ready for airplane on the next side. We'll go up in five, four, three, two, and one. Sometimes I get so excited with our little chats in between exercises, I start us 15 seconds later, which is fine. Especially when we're going back to back on one leg and it's the first exercise. Already halfway there. So you lose your balance, reground yourself, get stable, start again. And we will rotate the hip open, nice and slow. Keep the abs strong as we rotate. Breathe into the body. You're doing fabulous. Continue to open up the chest. And we can lower down. Woohoo! We have one more round to go on each side. We'll start at the top of the minute. We're at seven minutes once we start again. You're doing great. So let's get it ready for airplane on the first side we started on. Last time on this side in three, two, and one. Go down. Just like if you were on a seesaw. You want to make sure you're balanced. Then you get to just hang out in space. This is great for strengthening the unilateral, unilateral leg really seeing how strong you are on that side of the body. The glutes, the core. If you're reaching the mu or using the muscles in the back to reach together, you're priming those muscles. And we can now rotate into half moon. If you are placing your hand on the ground, I recommend keeping the fingertips slightly bent at the knuckles instead of straightening them out and crushing the knuckles. This is how we can gain some strength in our fingers and in our grip, even in an, a pose, an exercise that doesn't even feel like it would help with the hand. And we can lower back down, take our 30 second rest. If you hear some squeaking, mascot Zenime is playing with her favorite toy. 
And we're gonna let the dog be a dog. All right, get ready for airplane in five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down nice and slow. Stabilize the body. If you're having any judgments come up, hush them up, put them away. You're doing fabulous. Your hands can go on the ground, establish your lower body, then bring the hands back up for 10 more seconds. Ah. In five, four, three, two, one. Externally rotate, bring the one hand down. Sometimes I like to put both down at first. I'm just moving and grooving over here. I hope y'all are enjoying this. You can laugh at me all you want. I got no one. Now I'm just playing. I got all of you guys and gals. We're almost there. And we can lower. Woo! Excellent work on that superset. Our next superset is tiptoe squats and standing figure fours. So we will do the standing figure four on each side, back to back, and then we will go right into the tiptoe squats. So we will get started with figure four. Let me start my timer. And we can go up with the right side knee bended, lower down into that seat. Feel the stretch in the outside of the glute of the bent leg and knee. Breathe, open the chest, draw the shoulder blades back and together. Draw the belly button in towards the spine. And inhale, stand up and switch sides. If you need to, please hang on something. Lower the hip down. You can have your hands in a prayer position if that feels good for you. Out in front, above head. The world is your oyster, baby. Press down through the big toe, pinky toe, and back corner of the heels. And we'll stand up and go to tiptoe squats. So we'll go down into your squat and come under the tiptoes and lower. Tiptoes, lower. Tiptoes, lower. Tiptoes, lower. Excellent work. Find your rhythm. We got five, four, three, two, and one. Stand. Woohoo! We're going to take a 30 second break. Do that all over again for three rounds. So we already are one round in, done. It can feel so long when we have unilateral exercises on both sides and then you go back to back and it's four. <laughs> That's how I feel. All right, we'll get ready for figure four in three, two, one, and lower down. Excellent job. Halfway there, squeeze the glutes, find your balance. If you feel really spicy, press down on that bent knee for a little extra stretch and switch. Woo -hoo -hoo. This stretch is a heaven sent for me, let me tell you. Our last five days have been fun. Now we're starting over with balance. Getting a little bit more intense with each week to come. The last two weeks will even be repeats. We can come to stand, the tiptoe squats. And those will be great because we will be able to see where we feel a little bit stronger, a little bit more in alignment. The body loves to switch it up 
work your muscles in different ways. And we also like that as human beings, because fun <laughs> and not boring, same old same. And we can stand up. But then we really get to see where we are at. The inventory that we're taking now, through the first time doing all this, gets to be feedback when we get to see it a second time. Where do I feel stronger? Where do I feel more stable? It's a whirlwind. All right, we are gonna get going. One last round in three, two, one, and figure four. I'm not sure about y'all, but it's winter in Nevada. I lived in Alaska last year. Winters are very different, and it's so nice to have all of this sunshine coming through the window, but I am sweating buckets, and we have not been doing very much today. And we will switch in two, one, boop. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. This is just showing how intentional movement that is programmed in a specific way can still make you sweat. Even if we're not bebopping around like we were on day five yesterday. Five, four, three, two, and one. Stand, tiptoe squats, let's go. Stand on your tiptoes, lower down. When you come up onto the tiptoes, please try to have all of your weight on the ball of the foot and all of the toes. Instead of being on the inside of the toes or the outside. And done. Ah! Coming up for this superset is a sumo squat with the leg lift alternating and the standing crunch with the under the leg clap. So how we're gonna do this one is it's actually gonna be three by 10 for each side. So if we're in the R sumo squat and we squat and then we kick and then we kick, that's one. When we are in the standing crunch under the leg clap, we'll go one, one, that is one. So let's begin. So we'll get in our position for the sumo squat. Legs wide apart, feet facing out as much as you can, and lowering down into your sumo position. Three, two, one, lift up a leg, and a leg, one, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. And now the standing crunch with the under the leg clap. So arms above. We'll go in three, two, one, and switch. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Lovely job. We'll take a 30 second rest and we'll jut dive in two more times. When you're in that sumo squat, really use the glutes, just like when we were stretching or in our flexibility day, the yoga day, we had the wide-legged seated forward fold. Well, I asked you to lift up your tush in that position, to squeeze it, to lift it. Same idea in this position. Very similar, except we're just standing up and squatting really low but really wide. 
All right, we'll get ready for round number two. So feet turning out wide. If you feel like this is strenuous on your knees, just bring the feet forward. Don't go as wide. Otherwise, we will lower down and start in three, two, one. Reach out through the heel as you lift each leg. Feel yourself using your core to help lift. Maybe feel the sensation that is happening in your hips, especially after the figure four we did. Those got me good. We got three more left and two more left and done. Excellent. Now let's go back to the standing crunch. So arms above head, three, two, one, clap, and two. And here is three, four, five. I'm not clapping just so it's not so loud for the recording, but feel free to clap all you want. Two more after this. One and two. Grave it. Grave it, grave it. Start my little timer. I was counting in my head for the 30 seconds last time. Fully breathe into the body. Slowly exhale it out. Rejuvenate the oxygen within your cells. We're gonna go in about 10 seconds. You can start to set up for that sumo squat position. We'll go in three, two, one, and start. There is one, two. It's like we're kicking away all the bad vibes. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. Gorgeous. Back to our claps. Arms above head and lift. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, one extra. Good job. We got one more set to go. Our last set is going to consist of meeting Elmer, our other mascot, and plank fly frontal arm raises with the curtsy lunge with the obliques crunch. So we'll start standing and then go down to the plank. <laughs> so <laughs> again, the curtsy lunge will be reaching the opposite leg behind us and then reaching that knee up. Reaching that leg behind us, knee up. We'll get started with that, doing 12 of those on each side. So we'll start in three, Elmer. Three, two, one. You can't be mad at a dog who just wants your attention. Usually we work out together before the series. They don't get to be involved as much. We're already halfway there on the side. Good work. Two more. Now switch. Go at your own pace. If I'm going a little too quick, no big deal. Two more left after this one. The 
11 and 12. Lovely. Next, we'll go to the frontal plank. Okay, I'm gonna go. They gotta see me. They gotta see me, buddy. Lay down. Beautiful. I'll just do it back here for everyone. So we will do 10 of these arm raises on each side. Go up into your plank and start. You can alternate or do the same side. Have a wide stance with your feet to make it easier to stabilize. This is nine, 10, and done. Good work. <laughs> it's so hard to not play with you. Both of these hounds. Zena's the black one, Elmer's the brown one. We will get started in 15 seconds doing the curtsy lunge and then the plank all over again. So get ready in five, four, three, two, and one. Watch out, Elmer. 12 of these. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we'll switch sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now into the plank with the frontal fly raise. We'll go up, ten on each side. So front side down. This is two, front side down. Three, four, keep the abs tight, five, squeeze the butt, six, seven, keep a micro bend in the elbow, ten, and relax. We'll wait 30 seconds, and then do our last round. And then we're gonna actually cool down together, do a 10 minute stretch. We'll hold a yoga pose or stretch for one minute, and then we'll do that 10 times. And that will be our stretch session. So get ready for the lunges one last time. Five, four, Three, two, and one. Oops, I forgot my, my crunch. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Oh, other side, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Woo! Let's go down, plank one last time. Elmer, over here. Thank you, boy. All right. Go up, and let's go. 10 of these bad boys. One, upside down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, one more, each side, ten, woohoo, and that completes today's active training session. I'm really proud of you. All right, party people, we are going to stretch. The first stretch I would love for us to go into today is the butterfly. And we will get into that position, bring the feet together, and our minute starts now. You can stay upright, hands on the feet. You can lean the chest forward. You can place the elbows on the knees and push them down as long as the feet stay pushed together. And start where you are. If this is incredible intensity, you feel it, you can't go any further, don't try to jam yourself down. Doesn't make any sense. So breathe, feel what these sensations feel like. Allow yourself to explore the deep pockets of space that are in your body. Every area in between the muscle, the tendons, the joints, the bone, between the blood, between each cell. And we'll lift up in right now. Reach the legs out in front of you. We're going to do a forward fold. Our minute already started. So we're just rolling into each of these exercises. Start where you are if you grab the knees, the shins, the feet. If you want a towel so you can reach. You don't need to have your head to the floor if that is not where you're at. That does not mean that is the end all be all or the perfect position. There's no such thing because the position you're in is the perfect one for where you are. That is my yogic belief. Yes, if the path we want to go down is getting to those extreme bendy spaces in a healthy way, lovely. But I don't think that's many people's goals and it doesn't have to be. Next, we're going to lift up and spread the legs wide for a wide leg stretch. We're going to inhale the arms up, twist towards one leg, your choice, and lower down as far as you feel able and comfortable. Like I said earlier, it has been feeling like a sauna in here. And I opened the door, so if you hear any dripping, it's the snow melting outside. Allow yourself to pick the belly up off of the thigh, bring it closer down towards the foot, if that is where you're at. Keep the other leg completely flat, Keep the knee pointing up. If it's rolling in, you're too far down. Come back up, readjust, stay there. This is all about form, all about alignment. If we aren't able to make it further in a stretch with proper form, well, it's not gonna get any better when we do it the other way. So let's rotate to the other leg and lower down with an exhale. See how slow you can make your inhale? And see if you can exhale one second longer than your inhale. And we're going to lift up. And we're going to come to stand. We're going to do a quad stretch. So pull one foot back. Grab the ankle joint, pull the toes down so that the foot is flexed, and pull up on that heel, that ankle. I'm holding onto the wall because I want to focus on the stretch in this position. 
have a bend in the elbow so you're not hyperextending it. And feel the stretch in the front of the thigh. <laughs> we will switch legs in five, four, three, two, and one. Gently let go and switch other ankle into the hand. Slight bend in the elbow, a micro bend. Place your gaze on one spot of the floor or the wall in front of you. Reach the knee back as you keep yourself engaged in the front body. And lower that leg. Good job. Now I'm going to lean against a wall and bring one knee up into the chest. I'm just going to allow myself to massage the hip socket. Maybe I bring the knee to the outside. There goes in. You can go in your room. You can roll the ankle here. Do whatever feels yummy for you. You can pull across the body, get an outer glute stretch going. Almost there. Just enjoy the process. And we can lower that leg down and bring the other one up into the chest. Rotate that ankle. Maybe you circle your leg inside of that hip joint. Good job. Halfway there. This will be our last stretch. I do welcome you to continue if you are feeling called to continue stretching. Maybe you want to do a low lunge. Maybe you want to revisit our flexibility day. We can lower that leg down and add a couple more stretches to your end of this practice. Regardless of what you decide to do, Thank you so much for joining me in this training session and I am just blown away by what we are accomplishing in the last than a week so far. <laughs>